What's up YouTube, awesome Yuga here and today I'm here with a Artifact Trap Tricks Curry Bandit or formerly known as Cat uh, deck profile and this is for the January 1st 2015 band list. Now I really wanted to get this deck profile out. Uh, I've been playing this for uh, like a day and a half on Jewelry Network now uh, in the unlimited uh, area and it's actually kind of decent against uh, Shadol and Burning Abyss. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not fantastic against Cliff Forts. Um, that's probably because of some choices I made in the main deck, which make the Cliff Fort matchup a bit worse. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a really fun deck to play. I love uh, utilizing artifacts and trap tricks in the deck. Uh, I have been a fan of it since uh, Hat, so Hat Artifact Trap Tricks. And uh, yeah, I'll just show you the deck profile. So uh, remember, this is a list with just the one Moral Tag, because uh, in January, Moral Tag will be uh, limited on the band list. So you have your one Moral Tag, so I'll show you the Artifact Engine first. Then you have your two Beagle Tag, so this is what we know. Uh, then I added a Scythe. Um, for those of you who don't know what this does, Scythe um, uh, has the same effect as every artifact when special summoned uh, during your opponent's turn. Uh, but then during the turn, this card was special summoned, your opponent cannot use their extra deck for the remainder of that turn. So, uh, with shots of uh, XE, Synchros, Fusions, whatever, of course. Um, but this also stops the, uh, let's say, the public extra deck. So, Pendulum Summons would be stopped for the turn as well. So, that's actually uh, pretty relevant against Clyforts as well, Clyforts, whatever you want to call it. Um, then I use one. Ketasis, uh, this is your draw engine, and I use one, and this is called Philnot, or I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and this Philnot allows you to recycle your moral tech. When he's special summoned, you can set one uh, of your artifacts, which is in your grave, in your uh, spell and trap card zone. And that's why I'm utilizing two uh, beagle attacks as well, so you can keep um, spamming your moral tech even though it's just at one. Because uh, you're pretty much going to spam it just as much as you would with uh, just tr uh, triple sanctum and triple moral attack, uh, maybe even more. So that's it for the artifact uh, monster engine. Uh, of course, I'm running sanctum as well, but you'll see that later on. So that's six of those. Uh, then the trap tricks engine. Of course, triple trap tricks Mermilio. Actually, I have the super rare incoming from the astro pack, um, which I saw in real life. Just looks absolutely gorgeous. So I really wanted to get this uh, profile out as fast as possible because I do feel like a lot of people would be interested in seeing uh, what you can do with the uh, cat deck uh, for now. So triple Mermilio, double Dynia, of course. Mermilio's just uh, your best normal summon first turn, even better than the Curry Bandit. Uh, I think, um, yeah, maybe maybe they're about equal, but Mermilio's a better card uh, later in the game. You, yeah, you probably want to see a Curry Bandit in your first hand, loading up your grave with uh, some of these artifact cards, which you can't see because I'm sliding them. Uh, <laughs> loading up your grave with some of these artifact cards, and uh, being able to pick out one of your spell or traps, uh, it's really good. So uh, triple Curry Bandit, double Dynia, triple Mermilio. Uh, that's it for the monsters, so that should be 14. Then for the spells, we have triple upstart. Um, I'm using the triple upstart, triple pot of duality, as you've seen uh, uh, in, in a lot of my deck profiles uh, of some of the uh, more rogue decks. Um, this just adds to the consistency of the deck, because um, with all these um, artifacts, you do get some uh, clutter hands. Uh, this helps with those. So triple upstart, triple pot, then triple artifact ignition. Um, this is actually pretty good against the uh, uh, what should we call it, uh, Clifford matchup, and uh, one double cyclone. Uh, ignition, a lot more relevant right now than uh, with the former artifact builds, because you do need to utilize your ignitions uh, extremely well for your uh, artifact monsters. So. Uh, ignition Beagle Tag still an extremely strong opening because then you just get instant access to your Moral Tag, of course. Uh, ignition popping the Beagle Tag, Beagle Tag's effect is going to, or uh, sorry, Ignition's effect is going to set Moral Tag, and then Beagle Tag comes back from the grave, popping the Moral Tag, and uh, Moral Tag gets a, a, a pop a card, and you have a rank 5 play on the field right there. So Triple Ignition and the 1 Double Cyclone, which does uh, 
somewhat of the same thing. Uh, just not as good with uh, the Beagle tech if you don't already have a Moral tech. Uh, but uh, Double Cyclone is really good with some of the other artifact cards. Then for the uh, power spells, uh, one Snatch Steel. Um, remember, this also comes back to one in the January first list. And uh, I do play level fours, level uh, and level fives. And Snatch Steel is just a really good card. Um, being able to steal a card of your opponent and just uh, normal summon because on the Snatch Steel you can tribute summon uh, one of your artifact cards, which are relatively big. They're around two thousand most of the time. Um, it's just easy spot removal, um, being able to exceed or uh, yeah, or exceed with uh, your opponent's cards. Um, pretty much for rogue decks, this is a card you need to run to keep up. Uh, one dimensional fissure, this is the anti meta uh, aspect of the deck. Uh, Book of Moon and a soul charge. Soul charge plays are actually uh, pretty strong because you do load your grave up pretty fast with um, Curry Bandit. And being able to bring back like two level fives and two level fours, um, you can make some really good soul charge plays in this deck. So those are the power spells. That's it for the spells. It's uh, I believe 14 spells as well, which leaves us with 12 traps, which of course is the triple sanctum. Um, even though you don't have your triple moral attack anymore, sanctum is still a really good card. Um, you just bring out big level five beaters uh, with a possibility of. Um, Utilizing a rank 5 uh, just off of one sanctum. Then, triple Call of the Haunted. Um, Call of the Haunted has become even more relevant for the artifacts right now. And of course, it has the synergy with uh, both Dianea and uh, Mermilio. Mermilio, one special summon, gets the pop a back row. Dianea, one special summon, uh, gets to add back a triple or set a triple for me a grave to the field. And I am, for that same reason, I'm using a fourth Call of the Haunted, kinda. I'm using one Oasis of Dragon Souls. Uh, now what this does, this has the exact same effect as Call of the Haunted, only the monster your special summon is going to be in defense position, and it's going to become a worm type uh, monster instead of what it is, so uh, fairy or whatever when you're uh, bringing back a uh, an artifact or a plant when you're bringing back um, your trap tricks cards or insect, whatever they are. Let's see, Dynia's plant, Mermilio is, where's Mermilio? Yeah, Mermilio's insect, <laughs> so whatever. Um, this actually uh, has some synergy with a card I'm sign decking. Uh, I think some of you might already know now what it is. Um, but yeah, this just acts like uh, pretty much as a fourth Call of the Haunted. Um, yeah, which is just really good. So <laughs> I, I'm playing that as well. Then the two trap holes for the uh, trap tricks. I don't like running a triple trap hole with your trap tricks because um, I don't want to see the trap holes before I see my Mermilios. So uh, I've always run and I think that's the proper number. Uh, triple Mermilio and then two of the trap holes. And then uh, right now Boneless and uh, Time Space are definitely the best ones. Uh, and then I have some one-offs. I have the one Compulse, which is just that good. It's just uh, such easy removal against Windows and uh, Dante's for example. Um, really good card. And then I'm running one Microcosmos and just one Vanity's Emptiness. So this is probably something, this is just, this card's busted against uh, Burning Abyss and Shadow. So this doesn't need that much explaining. Uh, but one Vanity's Emptiness, you're probably usually going to see like three um, or two at least. You're not going to see one a lot of the time. Um, I was running no Emptiness because Emptiness actually isn't that good uh, in this deck. Because um, you don't have a lot of easy options to shut it off. You can go like uh, uh, ignition your own stuff, etc. But now you're forcing uh, a lot of resources to get rid of your emptiness. Pretty much the only easy out is like a Potter's Valley or an Upstart Goblin. Um, and then Potter's Loyalty, this allows you to, uh, to special summon for the turn as well. So um, then you really didn't get any profit out of the emptiness. Um, so I was, I was contemplating Solemn Warning, but Solemn Warning, I really don't like Solemn Warning right now. Um, so I did want the option of having one emptiness, uh, of establishing a big board and then having the emptiness. Uh, and of course emptiness with Macrocosmos um, and having a big board, so pretty much having like a play Pleiades or on the field or just two of those artifact monsters. Um, then all your cards get uh, get banished, so your emptiness doesn't leave the field. Now, if you already have a big board, uh, that's pretty much unbeatable. Uh, 
for example, if you have like a Xi'an and Macrocosmos and a Van Samtenus, you, you win. <laughs> you, just, you just win. Um, so yeah, th this might seem a bit off, uh, but having it at, at one really helped for me. And you do have to remember, all of these cards are uh, like semi-searchable with Curry Bandit. You're going to mill five, and if you mill one of these, you can just add it to your hand. So uh, I felt like one of each is pretty good. So no, Emptiness didn't get hit, you can't play three. Um, but I didn't like it enough in this deck to actually run more than one, uh, but it's a good card So uh, yeah, I did feel like I needed to run it at one uh, at least So that's it for the main deck for the cards, of course uh, The extra you have your Gaia Dragon for over um, Focusaurus mostly, Terrus, uh, Pleiades, Durandal uh, This is even more relevant right now uh, than it was in previous artifact builds because well, you just run more artifacts. <laughs> so uh, it's a fact of um, making a card effect instead of popping a back row is a lot more relevant. Foxhorse, this card's uh, still an unfair card. Uh, Dark Rebellion Dragon, just uh, put down some uh, quick... This is a Dark Rebellion Dragon. You can't really see that, but alright, just trust me on that. Uh, <laughs> it's just a... Uh, my opinion, like a better Gaga -ga Cowboy. Axaton. Bubble Chain, of course, for the uh, McDuffie play. Um, Dynia and Mermilio, and then stacking another Dynia, which is awesome. Digus Emerald. Um, 101, Black Ship of Corn. Castel, uh, Dweller. Uh, Dweller is really good with Regeki, which I am citing. Uh, Karagorgon and Rakan Zero, which is pretty good against Cliff Orts. So that's it's the extra deck is just some generic rank fives and generic rank fours. It's <laughs> not not much uh, funny about that, or not much uh, not something special. Then the extra or the side deck, uh, double Majesty's Fiend. I've been playing Vanity's Fiend and Majesty's Fiend both for a long time, but I've, uh, I've just come to realize that, or I find yeah, <laughs> that Majesty's Fiend is just better. Um, there are a bit less outs, uh, and definitely with the traps I am playing. Uh, for both Shadow and Burning Abyss to get rid of a Majesty's Fiend. Uh, so Majesty's Fiend with um, the Triple Monarch, which you'll see in a bit. That's just uh, something I really, really like to side against both Majesty's Fiend, or uh, Shadow and Burning Abyss. Then the one uh, Neospatial Grammel, easy spot removal against Window, which is a problem card for you, because of course uh, Morals I can't get rid of a Window. And then the two cards, um, Knight Dragolich. For the synergy with um, Oasis of Dragon Souls. So what he says, I'll read you the effect uh, text. Change all Norm Worm type attack um, position monsters that were special summoned from the main or extract to defense position. Because pretty much every card uh, your opponent is going to special summon is being put in defense position when you just have this on the field. Uh, it's a 1700 body uh, with the traps I'm playing. Uh, this is a problem card for your opponent to get rid of. Uh, all norm worm type monsters that were special summoned from the main or extra deck lose defense equal to their original defense. So that pretty much means that while well, damn near every single card your opponent is going to special summon from their main or extra deck uh, when you have this card out, it's going to be in defense position with zero defense. Uh, and of course, then you can just beat over it extremely easy with some of the uh, monsters I'm running in the main deck. So, I've absolutely loved Dragolich, uh, Knight Dragolich in my, in my side deck, especially with the Oasis. Because, of course, the monsters you uh, special summon... Uh, are put in defense as well, uh, but not if you special summon him with Oasis, because then it becomes a worm type monster. So you can have a Knight Dragolich and an Oasis of Dragon Souls uh, in your back row, and if you have like a Moral Tech Engrave, bring back a Moral Tech, pop something, uh, Moral Tech stays in attack position, and now if you have 2100 and a 1700 beater in your opponent, pretty much can put anything on board that will stay there. Um, you can put like your Dantes there or your Construct, which are free, kind of, um, and they can add back their fusions, like, let's say they have a uh, construct on board, they can bring back the fusion, but fusion for what here, you're just going to put down another construct or whatever, and um, 
it's still zero defense. So <laughs> I absolutely love this card. Uh, in this deck, uh, at least, how, you're, how I'm running it uh, right now. Uh, then Raigeki, like I was saying. Uh, Mind Control, it's, it's sort of like uh, another Snatch deal. It's, uh, it's good in some matchups. Uh, two MSTs. Um, more removal for Cliff Horse, for Scouts, etc. Uh, but it's also really good um, for your artifact cards, um, triggering them in your opponent's turn. So, um, double MST. I always like to side that. Um, apart from the uh, triple artifact ignition, triple Monarch Stormforth. Now, uh, this is not just for your Majesty's Fiend, of course, all your artifacts are level 5 as well, so you can just uh, use it as a spot removal and just normal summon your level 5s. <laughs> any of your artifacts. Uh, so yeah, that's that's really good. And then triple breakthrough skill for Winda, because Winda is a problem for this deck. Uh, yeah, that's just uh, how it is. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, if you, if you you don't have a lot of outs in the main deck. Um, actually, none, I think. Yeah, Compulse or uh, Time Space, but that's just pretty much on summon. Uh, so if you were to have like a Dynea, you can bring back your Mamilio. Uh, but that's your special summon for the turn, which window only allows you to do one, so Breakthrough Skill helps with that, then you can just go in your extra rack, Castal or something, and get rid of the window. Um, uh, of course, Breakthrough Skilling the window to use Sanctum on it for a Moral Tag, or Call of Haunted if you have Moral Tag in Grave, it's just uh, Breakthrough Skill helps you out a window. And it's, an, uh, it's a good mirror match, but I don't expect to see a lot of mirror matches. But, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, so, yeah. That's it for the deck. That's all the cards I'm running. In the comment section down below, let me know what you think of this deck. Uh, I absolutely love to play this deck. Um, it is a very skill incentive deck. Um, it's not like Sanctum Moral Tag just pops stuff. Um, it is not one of the best decks right now, so you do need to play uh, very proper to uh, win your matches. Um, and the card interaction this deck has is extremely high, so I absolutely love playing this deck. Um, let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know some other deck profiles you want to see for the January 1st. Uh, I've heard Insectors and I've heard Fire Fist, but if you want to see something else, uh, also leave that in the comment section below, then I'll uh, see what I can do uh, with that. Uh, for now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!